uh, welcome to my uh, studio. Uh, right now I'm set up in my home, but uh, it's still my studio, and uh, this is where I create uh, from basically nothing, thin air, something that was never there before. And that's what I'm going to do right now, and I'm going to show you how to do the same. A little magic trick. You take thin air, this right here, and you put something three-dimensional in that th thin air. Let's start off with a uh, armature. I'm going to get my piece of wood. That's right there. And I'm going to make a place for my armature to sit. And uh, I got a couple blocks of wood. I'm only going to use one. And uh, so first I start with a uh, block of wood. One for the uh, base to sit on the sculpting stand, one uh, to attach um, the pole that I'm going to use for the arbiter, and, uh, and then I attach this to the uh, wide base that I attach to my sculpting stand so that it uh, doesn't, uh, you know, while you're working on it, it's not tipping over or shifting around the table. First thing I'm going to do is drill a guide hole into my piece of wood. Some aluminum wire. This will be what I will form uh, the armature for the head and the neck out of, and uh, I need to find a drill bit that will allow me to use this, it's going on right there, that's going to uh, match the uh, diameter of the, uh, uh, the uh, aluminum wire. I want to get it started. I'll be back after I get this all attached. I stick it down in that hole. Now the hole's a bit big for it, but that's okay. Because what I'm going to do is run a screw right next to the uh, wire and put it right in the hole. And this will tighten up the space in the hole enough to lock the uh, wire in. want to uh, make a head big enough that we can uh, see what we're doing. So I'm going to go four inches. Now if you go an, an even number like four, uh, what happens is you can uh, divide it easily into quarters and thirds. I've already drilled holes into the uh, board so I can anchor it easily. There we go. I want this to be uh, at least three and a half heads tall. I don't like making busts that are right, the chin is right down next to the board. Uh, it does not look good clay. And I want to go four inches down, it'd be six inches, so I'm going to subtract so the bottom of the chin for the uh, armature is going to be below this. So that's the beginning of the uh, armature and from here we'll start adding clay. Alright, so I just wanted to show you something. I got these uh, two skulls uh, from a company called anatomytools.com and uh, 
This is a male skull and this is a female skull and you can see there's a size difference as well as a definite profile difference. Um, the uh, forehead of the, uh, the male tends to be a little bit more bulbous in the front and the female tends to be just a little gentler as well as the jawline is a little stronger on a male than on the female skull. Generally they are the same. Uh, there's a slight difference in the uh, height and uh, the cutback in here of the uh, cheekbone as well as uh, it's a little thicker in the male than it is in the female. It's just more delicate of a, a skull than a, a male and a female. Or, um, the uh, female skull just tends to be just a little well, a little more, uh, well, not quite as strong as a male. Uh, you can also see a big difference in the back of the skull compared to the back of the skull of a female. Um, and and size-wise, uh, the skull of the male tends to be a little bit bigger. But these are just uh, general uh, things that uh, uh, help you understand the difference uh, of course, when you're sculpting a female, you can adjust things to make it look like a female. Um, but I just thought I'd show you this that I got from uh, anatomytools.com. Anyway, I just uh, I've got that as reference. They're not very big, and they didn't cost very much, but uh, it's worth having, you know, references like this uh, to look at.